in okay's classification he classified the palato maxillary defects into three major classes and two subclasses f and z is a subclass and three major classes class 1 class 2 class 3 so let's see what are the class and subclasses so class 1 class 2 class 3 let's see class 1 class 1 was further subdivided to class 1 a and b this is not a subclass the sub subclass is f and z okay so it's class 1 a and b class 1 a is the defect involving the hard palate okay but now it doesn't touch the tooth bearing alveolus okay so i'll just show you the picture there yeah this is it Okay, it is involving the palate, but it is not involving the tooth bearing area. So the resection is either this or this. Okay, it's not touching the tooth bearing area. Okay, so what will be the rehabilitation? Pure obturator. Okay, simple. We'll come to that. So this is going to be telling about reconstruction as well as obturator for us. Okay, so that's again it's very useful classification. Now. class b where the defect involving any part of the alveolus okay and dentition okay as well as the palate which involves the posterior to canine okay the portion posterior to canine i'll show you the image so that's the that is they're talking about an area any part of the maxillary alveolus and dentition posterior to canine so this is a picture there so this is the one which is posterior to canine any portion okay so this is the canine there so posterior to canine so two pictures you have to go okay one a and one b so this is one and one b now one b is not over yet it also involve premaxilla so this is a picture there this is a premaxilla so you remember this one a is purely palatal okay there is no tooth bearing areas Now, one B is it can be either this portion, the posterior portion behind the canine, on one side, not both side, one side, or the premaxilla. So remember this picture. So that's the first part of uh, okay classification one A and one B. Now let's come to two. Okay, this one B. So class two classification is the defect involving any portion of the maxillary alveolus. Okay, any portion of the maxillary alveolus. but include only one canine okay so how to give this this is it okay that is any portion of the alveolus but only one canine so it the previous one was behind the canine one may was here okay now it is going up as well and it includes one canine okay so remember it goes to the two canines it's different so the one was one a was oh sorry one a was purely in the palatal one b was behind the canine okay and now the two is including the canine but only one canine okay including the canine but only one canine or can also be anterior transverse palatectomy okay defect that involves less than half of the palatal surface so it's this is the anterior transverse this is a transverse incision isn't it so anterior transverse palatectomy but less than half okay less than half of the palatal surface not more than half so very very clear it has to be one a was this portion purely palate no tooth one b was either behind the canine posteriorly or the premaxilla okay now you have got class 2 defect that is behind the canine is not there it is including the canine one side or less than half transverse incision so let's see what is class 3 exactly the modification of class 2 that is it can be either both canines or greater than half of the palatal surface okay so if you know one it's much easier to go to two why because if this is this is this is one sorry sorry one b i'm talking about one this is one b then including this is two okay so that's one thing now if this is coming to this part if this is two 
including the other canine is 3. Okay, so what was 2? 2 was 1 canine. 1 was behind the canine. 2 was including the canine. So on one side. So if you include the both canine, it is 3. Or if you have the transverse incision, which is, you know, half of it, okay, half of it, then the remaining portion also greater than half, it is the 3. Okay, hope I'm not confusing you more. It's very simple, it's very simple basically, but yeah, see, this is 1A, purely palatal. Okay, now if you have the posterior to canine, okay, this is 1B or it can be pre-maxilla also, which is 1B. Okay, now if you include the canine, okay, it is 2. Okay, I'm go not going into the transverse part. Okay, later. Now, if you include the canine on the other side also, that is, this was the 2. And if you include the canine on the other side also, that is 3. Okay. Another modification of the 2 was, if it is less than 50% or of the palate transversely, it is 2. And if it is more than 50%, it is 3. I'm just repeating once again. Very simple it is. If it is purely palatal, it is 1A. E. Okay, and if it is behind the canine, it is 1B. If it is one canine, also included, which is the 2. And if it is the both canine included, it is 3. Okay, so I'll just make it like this. If both canine included, so like this. If the both canine is included, then it is 3. Okay, and another modification of 2 is if less than 50 is this, if greater than 50, it is 3. Okay, so this is the classification. You have got class 1, class 2, class 3. I said, as I said you, now you have got what is known as the subclass. Okay, you have got subclass F and Z. Okay, where F is uh, the, if it involves the inferior orbital rim. Now, this is where reconstruction is important, isn't it? Reconstruction, this is where the surgery, surgery or surgeon is being benefited when he said about class uh, subclass F and Z because I told you if it is purely horizontal component of the palate being described you can give only obturator. Now this guy okay is also telling about inferior orbital ring being involved okay if there is F and if there is Z if the Z, there is a body of zygomatic bone being involved. So now let's see the reconstruction okay then let's understand the reconstruction it's the same thing that is uh, what is class 1A quick review not involving tooth bearing area only the palate so dentition is not lost so you can simply give an obturator or you can give a local or free facio cutaneous flap there is not not osseo remember that okay it's fishy only fascia is involved and skin is involved you can give a, a flap it is the facio cutaneous okay facio cutaneous now when you come on to the uh, next one which is b which is involving any part of the alveolus posterior to canine but on the one side or premaxilla. Okay, then here dentition is involved. So you have to go for an obturator with prosthetic teeth or a free flap like the previous one, facial cutaneous, but thinking of a denture later on. Okay, so that's 1B. So 1A is um, dentition not involved, so you don't need to replace the dentition. 1B dentition is involved, so you have to replace the dentition, nothing big. Now, the uh, same applies for class 2. What was class 1 basically? 1 is, 1A uh, is this, okay? 1B is, very simple, I've told you, posterior to canine or premaxilla. What was 2? 2 is, yeah, just involving one side canine or the transverse one. So, in that case also, you have to give, because you get a good retention of obturator, only one side is involved, or the entire posterior portion is remaining. So, you get a good retention of obturator or you can give for a facio, facio cutaneous flap. So, 1B, okay, and yes, definitely no doubt dentition is involved. So, you have to replace the dentition. So, 1B and 2 are what? Same in case of reconstruction. Okay, same in case of reconstruction. But when you come on to the type 3, that is where the variation comes. There is the both canines are involved or greater than 50 percentage of the palate is involved. Okay, both sides, isn't it? That is, so I've told you, this, this is one. So, if you just include that also, it is two, uh, sorry, 
extremely sorry <laughs> okay one is the one one is where behind the canine what is two two is just one side canine three is what three is going to the opposite side canine as well so in that case you can't give give an obturator because you don't get a retention for obturator the entire palate see the entire maxilla is being removed so you can't go for an obturator so you have to think something different okay so this is a little or no residual palate is left okay so poor retention of obturator okay there's a poor retention of obturator so you have to go for free osseo cutaneous so here you need bone why because lots of bone is lost the first two cases one and two okay you just need facio cutaneous here you need osseo cutaneous flap or you can go for a rectus flap now rectus abdominis muscle i'm just just want to give you this is a rectus abdominis muscle okay the abdominal muscle so it's rectus abdominis so you can go for either of this